in this lesson, we continue our discussion of the reorder point or RQ model. In particular, I want to introduce what we will call the managerial RQ policy. Let me briefly show you how this fits into the big picture. In terms of random demand and lead time models, we are currently exploring multiple order models. And we'll talk about single order models later. When it comes to multiple order models, there are periodic review models and continuous review models. And we previously explored the difference between the two. Focusing on the continuous review model, we have learned about the optimal reorder point or RQ model. We call it optimal because we find the values of the order quantity Q and the reorder point R so as to minimize the sum of all relevant costs. But sometimes that's not possible for reasons I will explain in a moment. The next best thing then is a managerial RQ model. And that is what we will learn about here. Before we discuss this managerial RQ model, let's revisit the optimal RQ model. The basic idea is simple. We determine the order quantity and the in-stock probability that will allow us to minimize the sum of holding, order placement, and back order costs. While this sounds pretty straightforward in theory, it is actually rather difficult to implement in practice. In particular, it can be challenging to quantify the back order cost. How much money does a retailer, for example, really lose when an item is back ordered? There may be a cost of expediting, an opportunity cost, and a loss of goodwill, for example. Putting a price tag on these costs is difficult, since they may vary from one situation to another and from one customer to another. In most instances, we may not be able to determine or even estimate the back order cost. And with this crucial piece of information gone, we can no longer calculate truly optimal values of Q and R. Let's take a look at the order quantity first. If we don't know the back order cost, the product of P and N of R cannot be calculated, and it effectively drops out of the formula. And when that happens, we are left with the basic EOQ. In other words, where we don't have back order cost information, the best we can do is choose Q so as to minimize the sum of holding and order placement costs. And that's precisely what the basic EOQ does. Now, let's take a look at the in-stock rate. Without the back order cost P, the denominator of the ratio in the formula is undefined. Of course, that means that we simply have no way of calculating an optimal in-stock probability. Instead, we have to rely on the input from managers who set a customer service level target. And this is why we call this the quote-unquote managerial RQ policy. It relies on a managerially defined service level target. Speaking of customer service levels, this may be a good time to talk about two key customer service metrics, the in-stock rate and the fill rate. It may be easiest to explain these using a simple example. Take a look at this data table. For each of 10 order cycles, we see how many units customers demanded and how many stockouts, if any, there were. In cycle number four, for example, demand was 20 units, but we stocked out by five. This means that we were able to sell only 15 units in this cycle. Now let's determine what the in-stock rate is. The in-stock rate is the percentage of all order cycles in which no stockouts were observed. In our example, there are a total of 10 cycles. And in seven of these cycles, we did not stock out. 
so our in-stock rate is 70% in this case. The in-stock rate is often called alpha or the type 1 service level. And it is important to remember that the in-stock rate gives us a measure of the frequency of in-stock occurrences. The fill rate is the proportion of demand filled from on-hand inventory. This means that total demand is in the denominator and sales from on-hand inventory are in the numerator. In this case, total sales amounted to 180 units, that is 200 units demanded minus total stockout quantity of 20. This gives us a fill rate of 90%. The fill rate is often called beta or the type 2 service level and is an indicator of the magnitude of the customer service we provide in terms of our ability to fill demand from on-hand inventory. Of course, it is quite easy to determine in-stock rates and fill rates when looking at historical data. But we can also statistically estimate fill rates. We have seen the probability density function of lead time demand before. And you may recall that alpha is the area shaded in green. And alpha ultimately defines the reorder point R. The cumulative density function shown below is simply a different graphic representation of the same lead time demand distribution. What's important here is this. The area above this curve to the right of the reorder point R is what we call N of R, the expected stockout quantity per cycle. So the greater alpha, the further R moves to the right and the smaller N of R becomes. The fill rate beta is calculated as 1 minus N of R divided by Q. Think of Q as the average demand volume per cycle and N of R as the average stockout quantity per cycle. This means that N of R over Q is the proportion of demand not filled from on-hand inventory. Accordingly, 1 minus that will give us the fill rate. Now that we can explain and contrast in-stock rates and fill rates, let's return to the managerial RQ model and specifically to managerially defined service level targets. When you speak to replenishment or logistics managers, you will often hear something like, we want to be in stock 99.9% .9 of all times. And you might ask, is that really optimal? Of course, we cannot answer this question in the absence of accurate back order cost information. But here's what we can do. We can calculate imputed back order costs. The idea is quite simple. Remember the formula for the optimal in-stock probability? Let's rearrange this and solve for the back order cost P, keeping in mind that F of R is simply the in-stock rate alpha. This means that we can calculate an implicitly assumed back order cost for a given managerially determined in-stock rate. This is what we call the imputed back order cost. We will discuss the implementation of managerial RQ policies and the calculation of imputed back order costs in separate Excel-based video demonstrations. So please come back for more.